Hey, welcome to my channel. I've always wanted to do a reaction video. So I'm gonna be looking back at my creative output in 2020. Instinct tells me it is probably gonna be a catastrophe, but let's see what we've got. We're gonna start out in January because I think it's important to do a comparison of where I was at before this happened versus when it actually happened. I seem to be on a little bit of a wellness trend. Um, ironically, because I'm not really a wellness industry person, um, so it's kind of weird that I was posting smoothie bowls and stuff like that when it's not really how I eat. Like, I love a good bowl of ice cream, but I have never... I, I don't make smoothies and I don't eat smoothie bowls, so I don't know why I was even posting that in the first place. Then we move into March lockdown time. I felt like I was in purgatory and it was a very depressing time, obviously, as it was for most people. I was using a lot of oat flour because you can make oat flour yourself at home. It's super easy. You just need oats. And I took this absolutely hideous picture of pancakes that were delicious. Okay, they were super delicious. So even though it looks like absolute garbage, um, People still thought of it as delicious, so that's good. I would never ever present this to a client, I can tell you that. Uh, yeah, that might be one of the worst photos I've ever taken. Oh no, it's not the worst, it's the second worst. <laughs> the absolute worst photo I've ever taken was, uh, was this photo of gluten-free muffins. So it was kind of weird being at the cottage for so long and also being so depressed and isolated like and my husband still had to go to work every day so I was like home alone in a very like lonely neighborhood <laughs> every morning when I woke up I had to like really stimulate myself to do like very basic things in a way that I've never felt like that before um, and I feel like as I look back on it it really shows <laughs> yeah so these photos just remind me of depression basically and I love like kids stuff like I love cartoons and I love like illustration and I love kids books I, I just love kids things so um, this took me like probably 12 hours like this is a two-day project I started drawing like places that I wish I was <laughs> so I wish I was there super cute like I love this I love the pig falling asleep and, like the mouse picking the lemon <laughs> I'm not super happy with how I drew the ballerina okay the legs are a little bit messed up but I think it's really cute and there's lots of like little details and my mom and I love going to the ballet. We probably used to go like between four and six times a year. Like we really, really love it. And we had tickets to the ballet that were supposed to happen the week of the lockdown. So we were really like, oh, man, we should have done it like earlier in the season when it was still safe. So anyways, that was too bad. I was really missing the ballet. The next one is Drew the Shrew. <laughs> I drew the most depressing children's book that has probably ever existed. At the time, I kid you not, I was unaware that I was drawing our own story. <laughs> I also like cried numerous times while drawing it. Like I wish I drew this six feet tall on our wall. Like I really love it. Like in my head, like I can imagine the song to this, like I just, if you went inside my brain, there's a lot of this. The need to like cultivate something and like take the physical feet, like the vibrance that I have inside of me and grow it from the ground up. It was like the need to do that. It was also something that helped me feel like I was contributing. Like what, what is my purpose right now? And I was just like, I actually started like emailing farmers and like, arranging to meet with them at their farm so that they could tell me more about gardening and like explain to me some very basic concepts about farming so at this point i think i had started to like swing out of the very depressed feeling that i had from like most of the lockdown in the summer a lot of things in toronto opened up again and i felt like it was just like totally rejuvenating to go outside and see people and i don't think i ever realized how much of a social person i am and i started filming more youtube videos and honestly if i hadn't been really isolated i don't think i ever would have really dived into my youtube channel in the way that i did because 
I just had the time. I'm not like the best YouTuber in the world, but I like it. Like prior to lockdown, I used to do a three hour acting class every single week with my BFF. To suddenly have like no performance outlet was really weird. Um, so YouTube like provided me that outlet. Painting the mural, this was such a great time. Prior to lockdown, the vibe in Toronto, like the aesthetic of Toronto, like millennial culture was very much like minimal, white, gray, pared down, like almost monotone kind of. It was like super, super minimalist. Like that was the aesthetic. And it like never, it never jived for me. Like, because it's really not me. Like I'm actually super colorful and I'm like super uncool and untrendy. So I decided to paint this mural. Um, my dad helped me and thank God he helped me. I really needed his help. Like it was really a shot of sunshine and I love that. In the summer, I was driving to farmer's markets a lot and especially ones outside Toronto. I was eating a lot of really great food that summer, which is a nice contrast to the time in lockdown where I was basically eating like oats and rice and like not that much stuff because I was avoiding going to the grocery store. Okay, this part's fun. So, I'm a very like nostalgic person and I love like vintage things or like retro feelings. Um, so I started getting really into like researching vintage styles of photography and how to make your photos look vintage without using a filter, like just through photography technique. I think it's like my new favorite thing. In contrast to the smoothie bowls that I posted at the beginning of last year, where we started this video to this shot of pasta now. This year taught me to like really appreciate my cultural roots. Not to say that I didn't before, but I think I used to feel a bit of pressure to like fit into what was trendy. So trying to fit into like the food trends, which again, like I, they weren't really true to me. And I feel like that probably was visible, probably translated. But if you look at this shot, it's so sunny and it's so rich and it is like, if we're talking about the foods that built Amanda, like this is the prime food that built me. <laughs> like, so it just feels very true to me and it's so colorful and it's not overstyled. It's just very, here it is, it's gentle, it's warm. And it looks like it's just taken on someone's dining table, very linen and like, it's very me. I would say that it's that it, kind of gave me time to explore a different part of myself and I don't think I would have ever got that opportunity otherwise because otherwise like the cycle like the wheel just keeps turning constantly like the wheel that you're on and unless you do something to consciously step off of it then you're not going to see it for what it was so I think it was an educational time for me and it just allowed me this opportunity to explore different sides of myself I mean, I never would have spent any time on illustration. I never would have spent any time on this vintage style of photography. Like there are a lot of things that I probably wouldn't have done. And maybe I would still be on track to creating something that wasn't fully true to myself. I don't know. I think I have to find a silver lining in it to help me deal with it. Um, if you don't want to find a silver lining in it, you know, that's totally your own call. It's Everyone deals with things in different ways. Well, this has been quite a journey. Um, thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel uh, for other content, TBD. And yeah, have a good one. Bye.